Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is April 10th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the state of California here. We're going to be warming up here for a few days, but we have another storm system. Yes, another storm system is going to set up shop here right off the coast. Pretty dynamic storm as well. We'll take a look at those details as we go through the video today. By the way, I am in a hotel this morning. I'm just north of Austin, Texas. I will be flying back tomorrow, so my briefing should be from home tomorrow. It just might be a little bit later in the day. Now, taking a look at what's going on, you can see the ridge across uh, the west coast of North America, but take a look at the system here. This is looking at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars, by the way, and you can see this really sets up shop quite nicely off the coast of California here. And this is going to be bringing some nice precipitation, some nice mountain snow, some gusty winds, some big waves out there. Yeah, classic storm system here, and we're getting a bit late in the season, but we will definitely take it. Going to bring some nice mountain snows for the Sierra Nevada. Also, if we take a look at the timing of this system, you can see the precipitation largely starting on the day Friday. This is Friday afternoon. Here we go through Friday night and Saturday morning. That'll be right off the coast of the Bay Area here, spreading some precip back up into the region, hopefully helping out some of the farmers across some of the valley areas, showing between a quarter and a half an inch there. So that should be beneficial to anybody just now planting crops as we speak. And then that system finally starts to move through and gets out of here by the time we go on to the day Monday. And then there's going to be another system that's going to drop down the Pacific Northwest, probably more of an inside slider for us, but we'll be looking at those details over the next few days. Plenty of time to worry about that. Let's see if the GFS agrees with the European, and you can clearly see at 18,000 feet, it looks almost identical here, setting up shop right off the Bay Area as we go on in through this weekend coming up. And then that inside slider comes rolling down here as well, but plenty of time to look at that here in the upcoming days. Now taking a look at wave uh, significant wave heights and direction, and see if you can spot the storm system. As you can see, California's here, there's the Hawaiian Islands. You can see the increase of the wave activity there moving down the coastline and really starting to impact the areas we go through today, Saturday, and then holding on into Sunday here before things start to dissipate as we go on into next week. There's probably just wind-driven waves there as we go on into next week. Now taking a look at 100 meter wind speed, the system's going to bring some gusty winds with it as well. You'll see the frontal system moving down again on the day Friday and the storm setting up shop here, starting to tight that, tighten that gradient across the higher terrain, some of the coastal ranges here as well, the desert areas here in Nevada, Nevada on through Arizona. Some pretty gusty winds are incoming here with this storm system and we'll look at that in a little bit more detail as we get closer to it, especially with some of the high resolution models. But yeah, definitely going to bring some windy conditions with it. Now, this is something I don't normally show, but this is 500 millibar heights, and this is run-to-run -run change. So that, again, this is at 18,000 feet, and here comes our storm system. And this blue to the left of that low there, or the upper level low, or I should say heights at 500 millibars, that shows that the system is trending a little bit further to the west, which if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that probably be, means a little bit of, better of a moisture tap. So that could bring some beneficial rains to some of the valley areas. And uh, hopefully it doesn't spawn any flooding concerns, but we could get some moderate or even a bit of heavy rain at times, depending on the location. And of course, some thunderstorm activity has a potential to come with this storm as well. Now, taking a look at total precipitation in inches, let's just scroll through here. This is last night's European run. As we go through the day Friday, you'll see this precipitation. Some of it in the form of snowfall, again, across the Sierra Nevada, but the coastal ranges here are going to get a nice uh, rounder rainfall, kind of targeting Santa Barbara and Ventura County a bit mostly there. But as we scroll back, here you'll notice towards Sacramento and some of the farming areas may get up over a half an inch maybe even a little bit more if the European is right and heck even a third of an inch is nice to get down all the way towards Bakersfield as well kind of dampen things also and maybe some heavier rain towards the coastal areas here also so we'll take a look at that in the high resolution models as we get a little bit closer now taking a look at daily two meter temperature if you uh, look this is Wednesday there's some 80s out there across a lot of valley areas the deserts warming up into the 90s here Southern California nice and hot if you want to beat the heat try to get it to the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada for the next couple of days and you can see tomorrow even warmer check it out some 90s showing up some upper 80s here for the valleys you might get upper 80s for some of the Los Angeles metro nice and warm in San Diego as well and then we see that little bit of a cool down start to creep in here still 87 for Bakersfield it looks like in some 90s out there across Arizona up towards Las Vegas but then by the time we get to Saturday you can see the cool down is being felt across some of the region here and even across the desert areas cooling them down to the 70s upper 70s in Arizona as well and then maybe we'll bounce back after that but plenty of time to worry about that and looking at total snow in inches and again we're now into April so this is very beneficial snowfall I mean we're already above average but getting some of the snowfall in April and we're usually 
uh, on a pretty steep decline here as we go through, uh, especially later April, we start to lose some of that snowpack to the melting and whatnot. So this is very beneficial to be adding to it at this time of year. And then let's take a quick look here at the six to 10 day. Got this uh, near normal signal here, but a lot of below average signal here for some of the West Coast. But take this to the grain of salt right now. This hasn't been updated yet today. This is the eight to 14 day and kind of showing this above average signal for some temperatures as we go through the 23rd. It could be a ridge building in uh, through the extended forecast. And this is the eight to 14 day precipitation outlook. So this storm will be a bit beneficial because we may start to dry out a bit here as we go through mid and later April. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I should be back home tomorrow. I had viewed the eclipse out here a couple days ago. It was just awesome. Did a little bit of storm chase yesterday, saw some lightning. And, you know, got pretty close to a, a pretty nasty storm out there, but the visibility was not good. It's pretty, uh, kind of typically the case down here in Texas where you're dealing with some pretty high dew points and the viewing conditions aren't optimal. But I will be chasing much more as we go through later May and on into June in the summertime. So looking for some more photogenic storms in that time frame. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.